Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topics today are more information on the massive arrests and also the last 15 days. Now, you may be saying, well, what does the last 15 days have to do with massive arrests? And I'm going to show you. See, you got to look at this, this whole world, through the eyes of Bible prophecy. And what God is saying to these last days prophets. If you don't want to lose your life's savings, if you have an IRA or a 401k, the thing to do is call 800-200-GOLD. 800-200-GOLD. These folks are Christians and they specialize in helping people not lose their life savings in the event of a stock market crash and things like that. Look, most of the 401ks, most of the IRAs are in paper, backed by paper, and as Lindsey Williams says, if it's in paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. You can lose it all. 1-800-200-GOLD. 800-200-GOLD. Hey, give them a call. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't cost you anything. See if they can give you some good advice. We've got a new sponsor. It's sat123.com. Sat123.com. I'm amazed at what this company offers. They got satellite phones. They've got Wi-Fi hotspots where you can have internet any place. So suitcase nukes, nukes go off in your city. If you don't have to worry about that, you still have electricity, it can go right up and connect to a satellite. They also have marine satellite internet. They also have satellite radios so that you can talk back and forth, even though, in other words, it's not a phone, it's a radio, but it's satellite. So go check it out, satellite123.com. And if you use the promo code PROPHECY, there are several different kinds of discounts in there. Okay, so the first article says, Suggested 28th Amendment focuses on a terror attack. And I did confirm this. They are talking about possibly doing this. A bipartisan group in Congress wants the nation to be better prepared for a mass casualty event. I know. Sounds crazy. Matter of fact, several things I'm going to bring in the program today sound crazy. In D.C., the four have proposed what they call a continuity, continuity amendment that would allow members of Congress to be quickly replaced should at least 100 seats suddenly become vacant. Now, I think they have a time machine. I think evil has a looking glass. I think they can look into the future, and I think they know Trump is about to get in, and they can't stop it. I think they know that there's about to be massive arrests, and many of them are about to be arrested. And this also may be on the good side, where the good guys, the White Hats, say, yes, we know there's about to be a bunch of people arrested, and these seats need to be replaced. Now, let's go on. So the current rules are, under ordinary circumstances, an open house seat must be filled by a special election, a process that can take months. In the wake of 9-11, a new law stipulates that seats must be filled within 49 days of a mass casualty event, resulting in at least 100 vacancies per roll call. The problem is, even the expedited timeline, timeline of 49 days is too long in a time of national crisis, says the representatives. Many states won't be able to meet the deadline anyway. So they proposed a remedy. They proposed, under the suggestion, suggested amendment, lawmakers would submit a list of five names of people from their own party to the governor as potential replacements in the event of a mass casualty, or I'm going to say massive arrests. The governor would then choose a name from that list as an immediate interim appointment. The remedy, though, faces long odds because getting an amendment passed requires a two-thirds vote of both the House and the Senate. Then it has to be ratified by three-fourths of the state legislators. That's tough to do. But why would they be going to trouble? Is that trouble? And why would they be discussing it? Do they know that a mass casualty event is coming up? Well, if one is really coming, they probably know about it. But I don't know of any kind of a mass casualty event coming outside of a potential 
New Madrid earthquake. That could do it. Or also massive arrest. Now, let's go on to the next point. And I have to give you a disclaimer before I get to the next two items. That is, I cannot prove these next two items. I'd love to have proof for it. I don't. I don't have a second event or a second voice. These things happen because we don't trust our government. We don't trust our media to tell us the truth. You know, we were lied to about the JFK assassination, the MLK assassination. We are constantly lied to, so much so that we get to where we don't trust anything. And as a result of that, all kinds of conspiracy theories pop up. The sad part is a lot of those conspiracy theories that you hear lately have been coming to pass. So I will present this to you understanding I don't have a confirming voice, okay? And I try to bring you the truth. Okay, so this guy says, and I don't know, I haven't made up my mind yet where I'm actually going to put about six minutes into the program or whether I'm going to put it up on the platform so you can watch him. But he has an interesting theory, and I can't prove it. But he says that all of this port strike that's been going on is really all about the military transferring control of the ports back to the U.S., back to the U.S. military. Hmm. Well, that would fit with massive arrests, now wouldn't it? The next thing is, serious alert. Canned foods are all being confiscated immediately by the U.S. military, so says this report. So it says, serious alert, canned, canned foods all being confiscated by the military. Four weeks ago in a town near me, a U.S. military multi-star general walked into a canning company, Campbell Soups. Let me get to the point what they said. Yes, I just checked with one of my friends who has a relative who works. Okay, this is, he said, he said, he said. Okay, may not have even happened. The general walked in, slapped down a U.S. government order regarding the pickup of all food. As of 10 p.m. Thursday night, truckers are moving the food to clear it all out as fast as the military can get it trucked out, probably to secret underground government storage locations. All right, well, let's talk about it. First of all, it may not have even happened, but it may be happening because a big tornado, or excuse me, a hurricane, just killed a lot of people. And a lot of people are needing the food. And it may be that this food is going to be distributed to some needy Americans. And of course, we would all be in favor of that. Or it may be that it is going to underground government storage. Or it could be the good guys getting it ready because they're about to have to feed a whole bunch of people. People that got arrested. I don't know the truth. I'm just simply putting it out there because it kind of fits. I can't prove it. Okay. He goes on to say, then asked my source if the largest food wholesalers had been contacted, and he informed me that Costco, Cisco, and major warehouse grocers are being or would be notified also. You know, this is a conspiracy theory. But we're watchmen, so let's Watch. Brethren, this is the planned food attacks against the Americans. Okay, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Now let's go to something we know is coming. And you're going to say, wait a minute. Why does this have to do with a mass arrest? How does it have? Yeah, it does. Watch. Okay. So there are three of the fall feasts taking place in the month of October. So we need to understand them. Trumpets, Atonement, Tabernacles. Okay, so these are the scriptures in the Old Testament. Let's go through them because I'm going to tie them together with New Testament scriptures and I'm going to show you why this is important for us to know in general, but especially this year, it may be more important. Okay, so let's take the first scripture. So going to the Old Testament, we look at Leviticus 23, 24. This is talking about the Feast of Trumpets. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, okay, this is this month, as in October the 2nd, this happens. Saying the seventh month and the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing trumpets. Okay, so what did they do? They blew trumpets. 
They had a, a holy meeting. They did not work. That's all? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of unusual that of all of the seven feasts, essentially all they did was have a big meeting, stopped working, and blew trumpets. Why does that fit? Okay, now let's go to the New Testament. First Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Now I know the pre-tribbers use this as proof that when the trumpet sounds, Jesus is going to return in the sky, which they are correct. When the trumpet sounds, he does return. But they want to believe that this happens before any trouble. Well, the problem is this year, uh, this happened yesterday. Okay, so no, it's not a pre-trib rapture this year. But there's another scripture. Then we go to 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So this actually happens on the Feast of Trumpets, which is the last day of the tribulation when Jesus returns with the breath of his nostrils. He blows the morning star down and it burns up all of the tares. Then he sends his angels out to gather us into the New Jerusalem. That's what we're going to make a point of. The next verse says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Well, what's the last trump? Well, the Bible says right here that there are seven angels that are given seven trumpets and they're to blow those seven trumpets. So you skip down to verse 10, 7. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he should begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. This is the last day of the tribulation, of the seven-year tribulation, yes, I know. I mean, it actually happens all the way to the Feast of, of, of Tabernacles. But the point is, this is the day that we get our mantles, our crowns, our rewards, the tares are burned, and the earth is cleansed. Cleansed. Okay, so it, it all happens on this day. Now, let's go to the next one. Ten days later, it says. So on the, now, remember, back up here. Let me show you. Okay. Here it says, on the first day. Look at that. The second line says, on the first day of the seventh month. Now skip, skip, skip. Now let's go to the next one, on the tenth day. So this is ten days later. On the tenth day of the seventh month, that is in, this is going to be September, or excuse me, October the 11th, okay, or 12th. Again, if you get two Jews together, you got three opinions. So they never seem to agree on anything. Also, the tenth day of the seventh month, there should be a day of atonement. Now, what is that? This is the day the Jews were told to afflict their souls. In other words, this is the day that if you don't correct yourself, I'm going to bring correction. Now, Jews today will walk around with a whip, and they whip their back like that with leather. I mean, their back is bleeding, and they whip themselves. And that's supposed to be their interpretation of what God is saying here. However, it goes on to say to make an atonement. Now, what is that? In other words, remember Lady Liberty that has the scales? It's saying for all of the bad you do, you have to be punished for that until it comes even. Okay, so make an atonement. So what you have done good, you get rewarded for. This is their understanding. What you've done bad, you get punished for on this day to make an atonement. Now let's go on. For whatsoever soul that shall not be afflicted, in other words, if you're not corrected, if you're not punished, in the same day you'll be cut off. That's the key. Now remember that. Shall be cut off from among his people. That happens 11 and 12. However, the day of atonement is also the day of the jubilee. What's the jubilee? Well, jubilee is when all slaves are released, all debts are released, all land returns to its rightful owner, all of the slaves being released. By the way, we're slaves to the Federal Reserve, we're slaves to the dollar, okay? And that might be the day that Shane Warren was told about when there's going to be a wealth transfer from the sinner to the just, First uh, Proverbs 13, 22. So, we're watching for that, for a jubilee. Now, that's all I can say about that. Let's go on to the next one. Now let's jump to the New Testament. So this is what the Old Testament says they did. 
Now we're comparing the New Testament and the Old Testament. Here's the New Testament. The New Testament says, I saw a great white throne. I know a lot of people think the great white throne takes place at the end of the millennium. That's incorrect. And I've explained that in my book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy, which you can get at prophecyclub.com. I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. Jesus is the judge for the Feast of Trumpets or the Bema Seat. Jesus is also the judge on the white, great white throne on atonement. Jesus is the judge. Matthew, or is it John? Ah, 521 says, The Father judges no man, but it's given all judgment unto the Son. I think it's Matthew 521. Anyway, might be John. I saw the dead, small and great. Let me back up. I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So this is the day that the, every high place falls, every low place fills in, the earth is turned into a nice round smooth ball, this is the day that the hills melt like wax, uh, the, the hills melt like water running down a steep place, and the earth is turned into a nice round smooth ball, all sin is removed, and this is the day he starts the shaking, he rises to shake the earth terribly, starts shaking, and the earth shakes for 10 days, and in those 10 days, he makes a new heaven and a new earth. At the end of the 10 days, that's when the new heaven, the new Jerusalem on the Feast of Tabernacles comes down. In my Father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you. We go to a place, I go to a place, uh, and if, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to a place to prepare for you. Now, we're going to get to that. Anyway, let's go to verse 12. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. You see the Feast of Trumpets here, that's a judgment by fire. The morning star comes down. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you might be accounted worthy to escape. Escape what? Escape the fire. Escape the burning. If you are left after the burning, you're blessed, okay? So here is a judgment by books, okay? You shall do no work that same day. And if I told to make it time, I talked about that. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so. I saw the dead, small and great, stand for God, and the books were open, and the book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things written in the books. So the Feast of Trumpets is your judgment by fire, which is the morning star. Atonement is a judgment by books. These are the people that never heard of Jesus, never had an opportunity to receive Jesus, and they are the ones pre-Jesus. And they are reported, they're judged based upon their works. You and I are judged based upon whether we received Jesus or not. And then if we received him, then we're either blessed or cursed based upon that. Go on to the next verse. And the sea gave it the dead which were in death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. Again, books. Death and hell were cast, in, this is important, Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, or soul death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now you remember back in the Old Testament, it says here, the very last verse, very last sentence, he shall be cut off from his people. Here's the cut off. If their name is not found written in the book of life, they are cut off. They are tossed into the lake of fire. Now let's go to Tabernacles. We're going back to the Old Testament. The 15th day of the seventh month. So this is 15 days from trumpets. Atonement is 10 days from trumpets. So now we're 15 days from trumpets. The 15th day of the seventh month shall be the feast. I'm going to tie this together to, <laughs> to massive arrest here in just a second. On the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles. For seven days of the Lord, seven days you should offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation or a holy meeting. And you shall offer an offering made of the fire, and it is a solemn assembly. So the Feast of Tabernacles is about going to my father's mansion. In my father's house are many mansions. Here it is, the scripture. Now we go to the New Testament. Father's house are many mansions. If you're not so, I would have told you to go to prepare a place for you. This is us going to the New Jerusalem. This is when... Uh, my father will send out 
uh, the, the angels from one end of the earth, one end has the end of the heaven to gather them into the barn. This is the barn. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice out of, out of heaven saying, Behold the tabernacle of God. That's the New Jerusalem. The giant cube of gold that has golden streets, and it's about 250 miles square. It's a big, giant cube. The Bible even says four square. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, let me summarize this. So the Feast of Trumpets, we're not talking about the rapture. We're not talking about going to the marriage supper of the Lamb here. This is at the end of the seven years. This is the last day. Okay. Trumpets, and then you look at the next one, the word has atonement. You look at the next one, it has the word tabernacles. Now, why does that tie together? So, as I said, the Feast of Trumpets is the trump of God. This is when the pre-tribbers think that they get to go to see Jesus. That's not correct. They got things out of order. This is the trumpet sounding. I'm going back and refreshing your memory. I'm restating what I said. So that's the trumpet. And then here's the New Testament defining the, the Day of Atonement. Now, here's how this fits together in my chart. If you have my book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy, this chart is in the back of it. And if you order the new book now, you get the new chart. Anyway, so if you look to the left, down in the orange area, that's the Feast of Trumpets. Then 10 days later, you look at the top center in the purple. It says 10 days later. Then it is the Feast of Atonement. Then five days later, you can't see it on here, but it is the Feast of Tabernacles. Now let's tie this together to the massive arrest. Okay, so as I'm recording this, it's the 4th of October. So Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of Trumpets, already happened. So those people that were expecting a rapture on the Feast of Trumpets of Rosh Hashanah this year, they already missed it again. Then we go to the next date is the 9th. Well, there's a guy out there who's done extensive research, and he is saying that the rapture is going to take place on October the 9th, 2024. Well, I'm going to be there October the 10th saying, sorry, another one has missed it. Now, every time a pre-tribber misses it, there's a couple of things that happen. One is all of the watchmen get mud on their faces again. All of the people we're trying to get to listen to us say, yeah, you guys don't know what you're talking about. You keep saying there's going to be a pre-trib rapture and it never happens. Well, it's not going to happen. We're going to wake up in a world of trouble and it still hasn't happened. I've showed you a lot of verses on it. Matter of fact, wrote a whole book on it, How Pre-Trib Won, How Pre-Trib Snookered the most Christian nation, America, into believing such a big false doctrine. Okay, but let me get to my point. We're still trying to make the point of massive arrests. Okay, so now let's go to the 11th. You see in the right side where it says Jubilee. We do not know for certain that 2024 is the year of Jubilee. However, in light of a couple of things I've shown you, and I'm about to show you some more, it may be. Matter of fact, the highest private, I've not seen as many things happen that saying that we are about to see a jubilee, that we are about to see this atonement, this Feast of Atonement, possibly be a roundup and a cleansing of the earth and a judgment. So we're looking at the jubilee. Then you go down to, on the 16th, that's the Feast of Tabernacles. That's when, in the future, one of these days, the New Jerusalem comes down. However, this month, if you looked at the BRIC Summit, October 22 to 24, that's when a lot of people are watching to see if the BRICS, which is now up to 159 nations, is about to release their new BRICS currency, and that could cause the fall of the dollar, and that fits in with a lot of other prophecies. So, we're watching specifically for the 11th, 12th area C in there. If that could be some kind of wealth transfer, I have no idea how that's going to happen. We just know that Shane Warren was told that, okay? 
Now, I covered this the other day, so I'm not going to cover it in detail. However, this is the guy that October the 9th, I'm not giving his name or his site because I'm not trying to attack him. I mean, I don't attack other Christians. So I'm mean, simply saying, I wish the pre-tribbers would stop teaching pre-trib. The pre-trib preachers and the people that believe in a pre-trib. You know, America might not be in such bad shape if there had never been the doctrine of a pre-trib rapture. Then people would all be scared, properly so. We would all be watching for Jesus. We would all see that our garments are clean. We would not be falling asleep. Half of the virgins were asleep, okay? Anyway, so this says, this is the verse that proves that there's not going to be a pre-trib rapture. There's other ones. This is the most blatant. Don't be shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit or by word, by letter from us. In other words, don't believe anybody's calculation that the day of Christ is at hand. It's saying it's not going to happen until you see the Antichrist walk in and set on the Ark of the Covenant. This is my way to explain it. It's not going to happen until you see him. There's a falling away first, and you got to see the Antichrist. And it goes on to say he sits in the temple of God showing himself that he's God, and that happens in the middle of the tribulation. So if you believe the Bible, those three verses right there, throw out a pre-trib. Not going to happen, folks. It's not going to happen October 9th, 2024. It's just not there. Get my book, How Pre-Trib Won, if you want to understand the correct sequence of the rapture. Now, if you get Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy, that's also at prophecyclub.com, that explains the whole Bible prophecies. It puts them all together. It gives you the secret door. It gives you the secret door to be able to put them together so you can understand. I got an email the other day. guy says, I've read your book nine times. And he says, it's, it's awesome. People that are real prophecy students that really want to dig in, really want the truth, absolutely love the secret door to understand Bible prophecy. People that just say, well, you know, you read it and you tell me the truth. That's, it's not for them. They're not serious enough. Secret door to understand Bible prophecy is for the person that wants to seriously know the truth. Okay. Then we have October 11, 12, Feast of Atonement. I've covered this before. This is the final day of judgment. Judgment of the dead. Those not in Jesus report that day. It's also the day that the Jubilee could. It is the day that the Jubilee begins. The question is whether it's going to be this year. Some think that it could be associated with the replacing the old SWIFT system, the Federal Reserve, with a new system. The wealth of the sinners laid it for, for the just. These are the dates when the massive, this is, I'm tying it to massive arrest. This is the day when the massive arrest could take place, if it's true, that the congressman can't be arrested when they're in session. Those are the days, according to their website, that the congressmen are going to be released. They're going to be, uh, what do they call it? They're not going to be in session. Okay, they're taking a recess. There you go. So we look for some time during those days to see massive arrests. We don't know that it's going to happen this year, but again, we're watching, okay? Massive arrests. I seem to remember, as I said, recess started October 1, the 11th, and massive arrests could start. We don't know that they're going to start. And we also know that the dollar is going to fall. A lot of prophecies, like 12 to 14 prophecies on that. He would say, he was told, Shane Warren was told, that they would be worthless as leaves, and it would start when they start selling oil and another currency other than the dollar. That started on June the 9th, and now Saudi Arabia, I understand, is selling it in Chinese yuan. So it's a short matter of time before the dollar starts falling. BRICS is having their meeting the 24th, 22 to 24. And so we could see the announcement of a new currency, the fall of the dollar. The, the dollar could go crashing any time. So I'll end with this. Ask Jesus into your heart. Get yourself prepared as best you can. In Jesus' name, amen.
In 2021, I started making bread. And long story short is I believe God showed me that wheat is God's famine food, just like it was famine food back in the seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, days of Pharaoh and Joseph. And I believe that that's what God has planned to feed his people. And you get it by going to josephskitchen.com. Three steps. First, you want to get a machine package. Second, you want to order six ingredients and watch some videos, download the recipes to be able to make the bread. josephskitchen.com. Most of your long-time storage food, emergency food, all of that, typically are talking $9,000, $10,000 to feed one person for a year. Joseph Kitchen can show you how to do it for around $1,000 a person, and your kids will actually eat it, and it's actually good for you. Here's some bread that I made. In my case, I lost weight, lowered my blood pressure, gives me more energy. I eat morning, uh, slice in the morning, slice in the afternoon. There's always a slice before I go play racquetball. Go check it out, josephskitchen.com.